Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using the On The Line Fall Florals as well as the Ornate A2 cover plate. I'm using the base today, but there is also a top plate and then the fanciful A2 hot foil plate, but we're not going to be hot foiling. So one of the things that we talk a lot about in card design is texture and um, making our backgrounds more interesting. And I wanted to show you that even without adding any kind of color that you could do this with white on white. And so I'm going to be, cover plates are a great way to do this because it gives you texture along your whole piece. Another way you could do this is embossing folders, though I chose not to do that today, um, mostly because I wanted to show you that you could get more out of your hot foil plates um, without even hot foiling. So here, this is the sandwich for the traditional um, cutting plate, which is just your regular base in your machine, a cutting plate, your cardstock with your die, and then a secondary plate over top. Um, the way that you're going to be able to emboss with this hot foil plate is we're going to add a little bit of water, first of all. Um, I'm just going to mist it really lightly, and this is to just help get a good impression. And then I'm going to put it wet side down on top of my hot foil plate, and then I am going to tape it in place so that it doesn't move and everything stays where I want it to go. Um, and then the recipe for this one is your main base of your machine, a bottom foil plate, or I'm sorry, a bottom um, die cutting plate. And then we're going to use an embossing mat over top of that. Um, well, did I skip the part? I guess I did. So base, bottom cutting plate, your hot foil um, and your cardstock, and then an embossing mat. And so here you can see the results. Um, this is a very subtle uh, texture on, you know, just a on white on white texture. Um, something to note with the die cutting portion, it does cut through and it will cut through your tape, but I have not had an issue with just peeling it off. Or if you don't want to risk peeling it off, um, you could just cut it along the edge. And when you glue it down to your card front, nobody's going to see it anyway. Um, so either way works. For this one, um, once I peeled it back and I just opened one side of the tape so that it would stay where I wanted it, the image was there, but it was not as embossed as I would like. And I did notice when I was running it through the machine that I didn't have quite as much pressure as I would have preferred. So I'm going to do the same so I'll have my base, I'll have my my cutting plate, I'll have my embossing mat, and then I'm going to use a shim. In this case, I have the Spellbinders Universal System, which I do intend to do another video about. Um, but just adding that shim, you wouldn't think that it would do a ton, but it really does. Like you can really see the texture so much better. If you don't have that shim piece, you could just use an extra piece of um, cardstock to just give you some added pressure. And then now here we have two backgrounds that are white on white that we will be able to use that will make our cards substantially more interesting without pulling away from our beautiful florals that are our focal point. Um, so for me, um, these florals. This is one of the things that I love about the on the line ones because uh, the succulents are the same way. The dies for the top and the bottom are separate, which means you could do like your own partial die cutting because they're separated. Like brilliant. It's so good and it makes it so much more versatile to use. So I will be stamping them both on separate pieces of cardstock because for one of the cards, I intend to show just a little bit of the texture. And for the other card, I intend to show a lot of the texture. Um, so I will be stamping them on two different pieces of white cardstock. Uh, this particular cardstock is Nina 80 pound solar white um, cardstock. And that's my preferred go to for Copa coloring, which is how I'm going to color these images up. Um, so I stamped them twice in my Be Creative Intense Black Ink from Honey Bee because it is safe with my alcohol markers. Um, and then we're going to get into the coloring, which I think you're going to be interested to see, honestly, because it's a little less traditional than I normally do. And I like that. I like breaking out of the box every once in a while. 
So as far as life goes, what have we been doing? Um, well, Eric's parents are um, on vacation. So here's the colors I chose. I do have to tell you, I swapped out the Y13. Uh, once I put it down, it was just not bold enough. And so I did swap it out, I think for a Y35. Um, but for this Copa coloring, I'm not doing what I normally do. The markers that you just saw are the ones that I'm using and that's it. Um, I don't intend to do flat coloring, but I'm not gonna do four different colors for each image. Um, because I just wanted to show you that that it doesn't have to be overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? Like we can get some other um, shades and dimension going uh, with just a handful of markers. It doesn't have to be what I do traditionally, which is like four colors for every thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. So here I'm just going to go in. I'm going to map out my images. Um, I'm going to lay down the all mapping is is just laying down your first layer of color in each one of your images before going back and coloring them all. So um, Eric's parents are on their own vacay, and so they have not been available um, to help with the kiddos, which is no big deal. Like, they totally earned the vacation. I was pretty nervous for them because they are not going to Florida, but they're going pretty close to Florida, and I was worried that, like, their vacation spot wasn't going to exist. Um, but fortunately for them, it is, and they made it there safely. Um, so... Yesterday, um, we you pretty much just hung out at home. Like we didn't really go anywhere, do anything. We didn't have any guests over or anything like that. So we watched a lot of Disney movies. Miss Caitlin loves, loves, loves the Disney movies with songs. Um, so there's pretty much always just one on in the background in the hours that she is awake. Yesterday we watched Encanto. Then we watched Tangled. Then we watched. Princess and the Frog, then we watched Moana, then we watched Frozen. I think that was all the movies from yesterday. Today, when I, because Eric and I flip-flop our days, so Saturday is his day to sleep in, Sunday is my day to sleep in, so today when I got up, it was The Little Mermaid, which between you and I, I think he partially chose because it's Prince Eric and the movie, and he likes to pretend he has delusions of grandeur instead of, you know... Just the no princehood for us. We got to work for our stuff. <laughs> um, so here, back to the um, Copa coloring. I am shading all of these with the colors that I already have. If you guys have watched my videos previously, you know that when you're blending different colors, you have to look at that last number. So I have a Y35 that I'm blending with my RV66. The 5 and 6 are very close together. For my larger pink flower, I have an RV66 that I am blending with a V... I think it's a 15. So the 6 and the 5, very close together. Um, it might be a 17. Is it a 17? Maybe it's a 15. I think it's a 15. It, I'm eyeballing here, people, because I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's a 15. Um... But anyway, so once I get back, do the shading, then I just go back over it one time with my lightest color just to blend everything out. And it's going to give me enough dimension um, to be happy with the coloring. Now, you might be asking yourself, Kelly, how are you going to shade that purple? And I'm going to tell you that the answer is I'm going to use the blue-green. Now, why does that work? Honestly, I think because it's a blue base, um, but I don't know. It does. It works. And if you are, if you think maybe two colors will work, but you're not 100% positive, try it. Try it on a scrap piece of paper. See if it goes. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Same thing with the BG75 uh, and this YG95. Should you be able to shade a 75 with a 95? I'm not sure, but does it work? Yes, it does. And so I'm here for it. The browns, I didn't shade with any other color. I just did another layer of the brown and I called it good. But it gives the yellow flowers a bit more interest because they have a little bit of a pinkish orange base. It gives the pink flowers more interest because there's a little bit of a purple in there. Um, the only other combination that I added with this particular floral is there's a lot of leaves in this one. And I'm here for that, don't get me wrong. But I didn't want to just have the combination of the BG75 shaded with the YG95 and the YG95 shaded with the BG75. 
So I did a couple of them where I used the yellow on the leaves and then I shaded it with the um, yellow green. And that also worked very well. All of these colors play very nice together. Um, and they are more, they are more fall colors. You know, they're a bit more muted, um, a bit more on the jewel tones, I guess. So anywho, in the middle of us watching all of the movies and of course, um, making breakfast, making lunch. We had yesterday for lunch was grilled cheese, which Miss Caitlin is loving, loving, loving the grilled cheese. Um, so she had, what'd she have for lunch? Grilled cheese and bananas, I think. She likes bananas too. Big fan of bananas. Uh, but really that girl loves the bread products, honestly. Um, but so does her brother. I, so do I. I love bread. So good. I feel so bad for people who have a gluten allergy because it's challenging to find good bread for them and that I'm very empathetic for because I love bread so much in all forms. Um, but anyway, so in doing that, my husband has been for quite some time on me. You know how they can be. Um, and he's been on me to hang things in our house. He's like, we're not renters. We live here. We don't have anything hung on the walls, which is a slight dramatization. So I think he should have to use the mug that says, so apparently I'm dramatic. He disagrees. We agree to disagree. Um, but if I was pouring his coffee, I'd pour it in that mug. Yes, I would. Um, but anyway, we it's not that we have nothing on the walls. We do. We have knickknacks up on shelves and things like that. But we do have a lot of things in the basement that need to be hung. And he's not wrong about that. So yesterday, he said something about it. And I said, we're both home today. Why don't we hang some things today? So that is what we did yesterday. We hung some things in our house. Um, we p focused mostly on our family room. Um we need to get a one for above our pantry. And we we thought we had one that might work, but it's a little too small. And then we thought we might have another one that might work, but it's a little too big. Um, like the frame is too big. There's no gap on the soffit. And so um, we need to find something in the interim. But um, we did hang a couple of things. One of them says... Um, like, this is our story, this is our life, something like that. It's real cute. And it was on a little bit of a bigger wall, and it didn't kind of fit enough. So then we put three picture frames underneath that, and that filled that space really nicely. And then in between the windows, we put um, one, and it says, um, home is where love begins, which is so true. And then on the other one, we needed like a long, skinnier one. And so we have one of those um, signs. We bought this forever ago. Lord knows we haven't. <laughs> we have not hung a lot of stuff. Um, but we bought this one forever ago. And it's the, you know, like house rules. Like we share, we say please, we, um, you know, we are kind, we say sorry, like those type of things. And it's very cute. And actually Nathan picked it out a really long time ago. So here I'm going in with my white gel pen as I am wont to do. And I am just adding a couple of highlights um, into the center of the flowers and on some of the berries. Uh, then I'm going to outline all of them because I like a bold black outline. It's what I do. I'm happy with it when it is bold and black and in my face. Um, so yeah, so we got some things hung. Uh, and then today when I got up, he had um, hung two more, which were like little cute little laundry signs. Back to the card. So here are these fantastic die cuts I was telling you about. So I'm for this top one, I'm only going to die cut out the top of it. I'm not going to die cut at the bottom of it. I'm going to leave it connected. I love it so much. And then for this one, I'm going to leave the top connected and I'm going to cut out the bottom of it. I just, I think it's so much more versatile that they're not connected and I'm here for it. Um, so for the one that I'm cutting off the bottom, then I will have the majority of the white on white texture. For the one I'm cutting off the top, uh, I will have the like a little sneak peek of the white on white texture and uh, the majority of it will be smooth. But either way, the design is going to work um, because we're using that kind of three quarter rule where um, you don't want to go like you, 
your card is like in thirds and it makes sense when you go like right in between, right in between. So like a three quarters look. Now on one side, I'm doing three quarters with the flower being on top. And on the other side, I'm doing three quarters with the white on white design being the majority of it. But either way, this is going to work for us. So for the sentiments, they also have matching dyes, which I'm a huge fan of. You guys know that. Um, so I am going to stamp these down in black and then I'm going to use their coordinating dies to cut them out. Um, so anyway, when I got up today, he had hung this little laundry. It's like a little hanger, but then it has signs below it. So he hung that one in the actual laundry room. And then the other one, <laughs> which, um, I think one of our, I think my sister, one of my sisters got it for me for Christmas. It says this home has plenty of love and laundry. Ain't that the truth? Oh, ain't that the truth? Um, so he hung that one like as you're coming into the laundry room, which is like in our little hallway. And that one fits nice. So now we have hung one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. Eight things in the last two days. And I may get a reprieve on hanging the other things. We will see. Um, <laughs> we will see if he's back on me again. But today I spent part of my time printing out pictures to go in those frames that we hung. Um, and so one of them is from our wedding. One of them is the last family photo that we took uh, at Caitlin's nine months, nine months. Yeah. Because she is coming up on one year y'all in November. Can't believe it. And then the other one is the picture of the kids, just the two of them, um, that was taken, I think in her three months. It's just a really cute photo. So, uh, I will put those in frames after I'm done doing my voiceover. So then at least we have pictures of our family in the wall and not in the wall, <laughs> on the wall, and not just in like pop-up frames that are on our mantle or our end tables. So here I have added this popped up on some foam tape. I love the white on white texture because it really allows those flowers, those bold flowers to be the star. Um and not detract from it. And that's really what I'm looking for when I'm making a card is that my focal point is the focal point. So um, the little sentiment, it just says, you're the best. I popped that up on foam on, as well and then just kind of tucked it underneath the line. For the other card, I'm pretty much going to do the same exact thing. Um, I'm going to pop up this whole panel, even though it's larger. Um, I'm going to pop that one up on foam but the sentiments will be glued then flat because it'll already, they'll be adhered to the panel that's already popped up. Um, so for the blessed, it just kind of made more sense for it to, in order for it to fit, I guess, for it to kind of overlap um, my little flower there. And then um, its counterpart, I feel like is maybe a little far away in hindsight. Like I wish I could have been able to tuck it in a little bit closer um like in watching it back I think I should have went on the other side of the s but I didn't that's okay I have these beautiful gems these are the marvelous moments marvelous moments yeah um gem stickers they are totally my favorite right now they're so pretty the colors are just so pretty so I chose some kind of brownish copper colored ones um to just kind of fill in that area and tie my sentiment together since there was a little bit more gapping. And um, since I like all things shiny, I also had to add them to my other cards. So I just added a little cluster of three. And then I'm adding the shimmers to all of everything, everywhere, all the time. Shimmers everywhere. Do it you won't regret it. It's very pretty. Uh, and then that's it. That's both cards. So I hope this inspires you to kind of try playing around with your products to see what kind of textures you can get. Um, even if it is just, you know, you don't even have to do white on white. You could do tone on tone. You, you could do a lot of different things here and still get some really pretty textures that make your cards more interesting. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.